Welcome to the third section of the Building Databases with Redis video course in which we will discuss such data types as lists and hashes. From this video we will drop our wiki application development which means we don't need the code and data from the previous sections anymore. We will start with a new application called Image Gallery Application. So, let's start discussing the application step by step from the position of the user. In modern social applications, the login screen is usually the first thing that the user encounters when they begin using the app. So, let's start designing a simple login password based authentication system. First of all, Every user stored in the database must have their unique unchangeable identifier. For example, login is not enough if the user desires to change it in future. All other users' data should be bound to that unique ID. At the same time, we need a mapping of login to the ID to find the user's data when authenticated. Let's start by organizing the identifier. Some database systems offer convenient means to organize unique identifiers. For example, relational databases have auto-increment integer fields and others, such as MongoDB, create unique identifiers for stored objects automatically for each object. Unfortunately, Redis does not have such facilities, but at the same time, the task of generating unique IDs is quite doable. Let's recall the atomic counters we were talking about earlier, particularly the anchor command which increases the integer value stored with the specified key by one atomically and returns the result of such addition. It appears that we can use the behavior of the anchor command to generate a unique ID each time we want to save information about some object in the database and any conflict between the concurrent clients is excluded. Let's move on with the data structures designed for our new application. First of all, when we authenticate into an application, we provide the login and the server searches for the ID and then all the related data by the login. So, obviously, we have to store a login to the ID mapping in the database with a complex key, for example, user to login id colon id next we have to store the login and password in such a way that they are queryable by the id so that other compound keys appear such as user colon id colon 2 colon login and user colon id colon 2 colon password moving on what if we want more fields such as date of birth and current status well we will add more fields. Here the problems begin. The more fields we add, the more queries we will make later to show for example the user's profile page. Thus making 20 queries to the database to receive 20 fields of one object does not seem very clear. So here we will discover the first limitations of our current approach. The first we use as many queries as there are fields in an object to get object-bound data from the database, which slows down the application a lot. And the second, we use long compound keys such as user colon id colon to colon login. All these strings take a lot of disk space, which is not effective. Redis offers a better way to solve the problem, the usage of the hash data type. This leads us to the next video in which we will discuss how to use hashes to store object fields stored in one Redis key. At the same time, we saw the situation where using only string leads to dramatic performance and storage penalties.